start, I want to reiterate something I also wrote in the chat, and that is that digital product passport is about sustainable products, not only about B2C, so that means information to consumers. Sustainable products means that we have to really put emphasis on B2B, where the information that the manufacturers and the value chain is sharing helps and creates win-win for sustainability of the product, sustainability of new business models as well, because it's about the greening of the value chains and the greening of the manufacturers, the possibility of reparability, refurbishment, reuse, and so on, until we find finally go to recyclers. This B2B is still, it's ongoing, so there's a lot of information that is already shared. We follow the work of uh, Industry 4.0, or let's say the uh, digitization of industry as we supported for many years in DigiConnect, and we want to build on that. We don't want to create another parallel universe. So that's why the relevant question that was there in the, earlier today, how are we linking this to Gaia X and Simple? You'll see it, we actually refer in the pilot that we will fund uh, to the Simple as a middleware on which you could uh, base yourself. So. Digital Europe program is a deployment program. It's not the same as Horizon Europe, which is a research and innovation program. Next slide. This program funds deployment, and therefore it's not really, when it comes about simple grants, it's not about you know, research and 100% and, uh, or 75% funding. This is really co-funding something that companies would like to do anyway. Now, we are in very particular case here because we do not have the specs yet. So we are calling for one pilot, like we did call last year for one CSA Sirpas is my previous project that is helped uh, in management by Hadea agency. So this time we move actually to something like a scalable and demonstrated exchanges under the DPP umbrella that we would like to finance in two product categories, preferably complex value chains, not something that doesn't have any need for information exchange after being put on the market, okay? So the complexity is there already as kind of a preference. It's not a must, it's a preference. So if there are two, are two proposals and one has two complex value chains, the one with, the, and one doesn't, the one with the, complexity wins. We would like to make sure that there are SMEs included and that this is a manageable consortium because in order to put everybody across two value chains together, that may be more than 100 partners, but we can't do that for a simple grant and logistics and administrative reasons. So it has to be a manageable consortium. So there are beneficiaries, there can be associated partners, there can be multiple type of uh, there can be associations or it can be the companies themselves, but there must be indicative uh, number of less than 50 partners, otherwise it gets out of hand. Okay, so you will have to find a way who is actually beneficiary and who is there as associate or other type of partner. We give also emphasis on international impact. That's why we have, well, I mean, I have fought for this contract to be able to carry associate partners without funding, but at least to have visible international players, such as specific UN agencies like UNIDO or UNEP or WBC or some others that are actually working on this space and working with the global community. We would like to make sure that the world actually comes and participates in this endeavor because, we would, because value chains are not European. This is a global issue. I could not repeat again more and you'll see it in bold. This project is mostly about B2B. Of course, there will be some outputs, as you will see, and some objectives on B2C and B2G, but this is really, the core of it is B2B. Now, uh, we, have did, we, we have done landscaping of, product, of uh, standards that actually are fit for purpose, international and open, across the eight categories that Michele talked about in the morning. That means authentications, identification, storage, security, uh, access management, and so on. 
So there is a report that has several, I mean, pages, there were several standards already preselected per category that the product, uh, the pilot is invited to choose from. We would like that you actually choose from there so you have a finite number uh, of pre defined, I mean, pre selected standards. Now, if you find another one that is fit for purpose, it's not forbidden to get out of this list, but we have prepared the list as, as something that would facilitate the process of, uh, of your choice. Next. As you will see the objectives, note the following. Three first bullets are about B2B. The fourth one is about B2C and the last one is about B2G. Now, what we want to make sure is that we do not forget the ultimate goal of TPP, and that is to make the products sustainable, to make the businesses selling the products to move away from quantity driven profits to more of a addressing the needs of our society of people, of consumers with less materials and with durable products. Ultimately, we would hope that DPP will serve the not only the sustainability of products, but also to make the products that are sustainable cheaper than alternatives. Otherwise, we will always be in this niche. So the ultimate goal is to change, accelerate the transition to circular economy to make products more sustainable and those that are sustainable to be actually cheaper. Otherwise, we will never get the consumers on it. Just information to consumers will not do the job. We can have the, all the transparency you want. You can have all the information you want about the products, how from materials to production to CO2 to environmental impact. If they are more expensive, that will not do. And we're talking about global. It's not only about what Europe buys. We want to provide new business opportunities, and that's maybe kind of the elephant in the room. How do I, my making product, can move to sustainable product, uh, sustainable business model? Of course, it's important that you give information to consumer and that you allow authorities to do their job easier. But at the same time, while you do this, try to see what are the benefits for the value chain actors. How do I create a single you know, center point of truth to do all the reporting automatically? How can I get a lot of administrative burden through this DPP system to be automated? Next slide. So again, the outcomes and deliverables, all, all these things that I'm saying are actually written in the call for proposal. You will, the slides will be with you, so I'm going very fast. So we still have a five minutes for a Q&A. Uh, we have, uh, we would like that there are actually at scale demonstrations of the DPP. So you choose your players, you choose the product, and you choose how many interactions you wanna actually uh, take on board in the project. So there will have to be kind of a real time scenario and it's difficult if this is in parallel to reality. So hopefully this is part of the reality of the companies chosen. So that's why the extra public money that we, you go into that extra uh, effort to create this DPP like system. As we said, this is, will not be the official DPP. This is your choice of how you would like DPP to be a win-win for all the actors involved pre-market, but also post-market. Uh, that means repairers and recyclers as well. On the KPIs, it is very clear that we like also varying size of companies, which should not be just a few big ones. SMEs are a must. The number of products, the number of exchanges, but also we would like to see some kind of a feedback from the others, that means consumers and governance. Next. Now, a little bit on the timing. So, if you think of the DPP having three major stages, like first introduction in the legislation that happened last year, we just talked about what the Parliament and Council thinks. That's the first step. The second step is the specs of a DPP system. And that is this meeting about. So, we are issuing standardization mandate. We hope that within, you know, 25 the standards will be fixed. If not, we have as Commission the right to write the specs ourselves. 
But what happens that the product, uh, the digital product passport pilot will actually work with us in parallel. So we are, we did not have the luxury of to wait until 2025 to launch this pilot that would then will be, it will take a year to launch it. And then another two, three years, it will be already the time where the DPP will be uh, legally required. So we asking the pilot to be flexible and to watch what are we doing uh, on the legislative part so they can take into account and on board some of the changes that will be happen during the lifetime of the pilot. Difficult, but we still ask for this flexibility as much as possible, of course. Um, next. Uh, there is one more thing. No, no, let's go back. Sorry. There's one more thing. So once we have the specs and once, of course, the trialogue finish and council parliament agree on the framework uh, regulation, the specific delegated acts per product category will start. And let's say they take textiles and the textiles is part of that. We will also want to test with this pilot. What is the boundary between what we call DPP system and how it has to link to the DPP discussion? Because as also Caroline explained, and as Stephen on the chat very correctly pointed out, there will need to be some commonality approach, how you identify materials and many other things within the delegated act so that we can actually do with our registry indexing across product categories. So if you really want to look for lithium in battery passport, in electronics passport, in construction passport, in whatever product category that is lithium, we need to make sure that all these specific DPPs to product category are consistently identifying materials, procedures, CO2 footprint, sustainability, whatever. So there is a big kind of a cross product category standardization needed as well. If you really want to use this registry as the member states are imagining for indexing all kinds of things they would like to see with respect to safety, you know, if they are compliant with some regulations and, uh, you know, tax suits, whatever, uh, checking. So that is really important to see what exactly should be front loaded to DPP system, what can be left to DPP, but then having a very close eye that each product category does it consistently. So I, we hope that this pilot will already kind of give us the first ideas. So we ask flexibility, but we also we hope to learn from the pilot, from the real life, what are the concerns that we in vacuum while discussing would never imagine. So this is really what we want to do. The last slide is only to repeat everything that was said by Michele in the beginning applies to the pilot. So it has to be based on non proprietary open international standards, uh, not proprietary solutions. The granularity is for the pilot to choose batch or item. So all these things are actually there to be tested in reality at scale. And of course, liability, another question that Stephen had, which is the elephant in the room, on both liability and also who verifies the information. So all these things are still in making, and we hope that the reality at scale will show us another dimension and the importance of what we should really regulate and what can be left to the market. Thank you.